This is the first tutorial in a series looking at simple 3D bat and ball games. The bat is just a flattened cube. The balls are UV spheres. The physics engine is controlling them falling under gravity and bouncing off the bat. In this tutorial I'll show you how to get the bat to roughly follow the mouse pointer. Change Blender Render to Blend for Web and click Set Recommended Options. In the Object Properties set the Z scale of the cube to 0.1. Scroll down and in the Selection and Outlining panel click Selectable. Click the Physics Properties and click Object Physics. In the View menu, I'm going to toggle into Quad View. In the View menu, set the top right-hand window to Camera View. Select the camera and in the Object Properties, right-click on the Location Values and Reset All to Default and do the same for the Rotation Values. Set the Z location to minus 15 and the X rotation to 180. I'm holding down the shift key and using the mouse wheel to pan the front and right views. Select the lamp, right click on the location values and reset all to default. Do the same for the rotation values. Set the parent of the lamp to be the camera. In the object data properties of the lamp, change the lamp to a Hemi. The 3D scene is now ready. The flattened cube is a very simple bat for bat and ball games. The camera in this game is looking up at the back of the bat. Next, I'm going to make a Blend for Web project using Project Manager. Click Create New Project. I'm going to call the project My Planet Shield. In my game, the bat will be a shield against alien artificial meteors. Create project. When you see project created, click back to projects. Next, I'm going to overwrite the project's dummy Blender file and use it to overwrite the dummy JSON file. Back in Blender, File, Save As, go to the Blend for Web folder, the Projects folder, the My Planet Shield folder, the Blender folder, click on the file and click Save As to overwrite it. To overwrite the JSON file, File, Export, Blend for Web JSON. Make sure you're in the My Planet Shield Assets folder. Click on the JSON file and click Export to overwrite it. Back in Project Manager, click the Edit link. Click the link for the JavaScript file, the .js file. Here, I have the finished code open in a text editor. You can download the file from my website or you can type in the code yourself. First of all, I'm going to copy over the extra modules and the global variables. Highlight, right click, copy. Click right click paste scrolling to the end of the file to where it says place your code here and finding the same place in the finished file highlight the code right click copy click right click paste. Notice also that I commented out the camera controls.
Now all we have to copy over is the create text display function and the two mouse callback functions. Highlight the functions. Right click, copy. Find the place in the code, click, right click and paste. Click save and back to projects. And now comes the exciting bit when you click the link for the web page, the HTML file, and see if it all works. If it doesn't, see my tutorial on using the web console for basic debugging. As I move the mouse, nothing happens, but when I click on the bat to select it, and then move the mouse, the bat follows the mouse, and I can click to deselect and leave the bat anywhere in the 3D scene. Going back to the code, the global variable bat selected is set to false initially, and I made the window width and window height variables global so that I could display them with the text display function. Scrolling down, I use the built-in inner width and inner height methods to get the window width and height. And as I have just said, I display them in the create text display function. Next, we add two event listeners listening for a mouse move event or a mouse down event when the user clicks anywhere on the canvas. When either event occurs, the corresponding callback function is called. Looking at the main canvas clicked callback function, first we get the X and Y coordinates of the pointer when the mouse was clicked. Then we get the object that is underneath the mouse pointer at those coordinates. And if the object is the cube, the bat, then bat selected is set equal to not bat selected. The line toggles the value of bat selected. Initially, bat selected is false. So not false becomes true. And then the next time the cube is clicked, not true becomes false. Next, the mouse moved callback function. If bat selected, if the value stored in bat selected is true, then again we get the x and y coordinates of the mouse pointer. We get a link to the bat, which is the flattened cube. Then we come to the line that is the most important line in the tutorial. It is the line that converts the X and Y coordinates of the mouse pointer that is measured in pixels into the 3D location of the bat that is measured in blender units. Unfortunately, there isn't a straight conversion from pixels to Blender units because it depends on how far the camera is from the bat. When the bat is in the centre of the screen, the bat is 15 units from the camera, but when you move the bat to the side of the screen, it will be further than 15 units. When the bat is 15 Blender units away, the conversion factor is approximately 1 over 120. And there is an adjustment that takes into account the window width divided by a value that is twice this value. With this simple formula for the X location and this for the Y location, the mouse pointer will stay reasonably in sync with the bat, especially around the center of the screen. The Z location value is zero. These lines display the coordinates of the mouse pointer on the right hand side of the screen, 
which is handy to see what's going on during development. I'm going to end the tutorial there. I'll put all the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website. To visit my website, click the eye icon in the top right hand corner. If you'd like to subscribe, click the stick man. If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials, click the patron link. Thanks for watching and goodbye.